This is Nick Baisley from Film Snobbery. I'm here at the final night of the uh, First Glance Film Festival in Philadelphia, and I'm here with... Teresa Wu. And? Vanessa Kai. And? Grant Chang. And uh, what, what are you guys here with? Uh, we're with the film Smoke Mirrors, short film Smoke Mirrors. Um, these are my two actors, and I co-wrote and directed the film. Well, congratulations and, and thank you for being here. What's the film about? The film's about a young girl who goes on a journey, um, basically to um, find herself. And while she's doing that, she actually uncovers a very dangerous secret of her parents. And it kind of explodes in her face. So it was a little bit of a coming of age story. Now, where did you find your two awesome young actors? Well, um, I was based in New York City. And so through Columbia University, where I got my master's at, um, the Asian American acting community is a very small community, so um, I got. Some You're Asian. I never would have guessed. <laughs> you can't tell. I know. That's why I was very specific about that. So um, it's a very small community. So I got great references um, for these two brilliant actors, and they did a lovely, lovely job in the film. Thank you. Um, what are some of the other productions you guys have worked on in the past? Is this your? This isn't your first uh, job you've done. Um, no. Uh, previous productions have included uh, Death in Love, and that premiered at Sundance Festival in um, 2008. And um, gosh, now we've we've done a lot of other television and, and other films as well. So, which it, some most of us, I mean, both of us, we've already done Law and Order a number of times. And but in, in um, festivals, I feel like I can't quite remember now, other than the Sundance. Oh, and then, of course, this film also um, premiered at the uh, DC Shorts. Uh, just a few weeks ago, so that was really very, very exciting. So. I like that festival, actually. I hear a lot of good things about that. Cool festival. Very, very cool festival. Awesome. And how, about, how long have you been acting for? Um, uh, a, a long time. <laughs> a very long time. Can I just say that? <laughs> you can say that, because... Since I was just so young. No, really. I mean, you're like, what, 29 now, so come on. Exactly. No, probably like over over 15 years, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when you guys are working on uh, independent films and stuff like that, I mean, do you prefer that over a larger budget kind of thing? Are you, is it more kind of homey, you know, you know, when you're working on, a, uh, on, a, on a, an independent film? Independent film? Well, here's the thing, is that... Um, well, we both also come from theater, so and then that's a, that's a whole other animal in itself. Um, I'll speak for myself. I love theater. I love and what I love bringing from theater to filmmaking is at the end of the day, it's teamwork and it's about the story. Um, so when you talk about big budget versus independent films, um, I I mean we I love big budgets in in that. I mean, I, I have yet the, the, I mean, I've worked on uh, very small roles in big budget films. Oh yeah, that's right. I did another couple of films like My Last Day Without You, that's also just premiered in Germany. And, um, God, there's another film. Oh yeah, it's um, a New York thing, which is another, it's more like in, a, uh, in New York, and then that's also premiered in, at the Cannes Film Market. Anyway, so, but the thing is that, what it is is that it's just another brand of storytelling and that I just personally love to be a part of. So when I'm working with fantastic directors or fellow amazing actors, then it's really about like where it's like theater again. You work together, and then sometimes like when it is becoming a big budget, it, like sometimes the story itself or gets lost in the process. Um, but uh, but I mean it's still very exciting to see. I I think that uh, I think that I have to say I really really love independent filmmaking. 
I really love it. Now, yourself working with uh, experienced actors and actresses, um, does that make your job a lot easier because there's kind of a shorthand there a little bit for, for the most part? Um, to be honest, I don't believe that there is actually a shorthand no matter whether you're working experience or not. You're creating a completely different story with completely different characters. So I feel like the same amount of work goes into it if it's, if it's experience or non-experience. It's just a different way of communicating, a different way of, um, I guess, molding the characters and a different way of um, just building the story. Um, but I have to say that, you know, these, these actors are very talented and it just, it made the project fun. It made me um, be able to stretch my skills as a director and it allowed me to just create a more brilliant story than I thought was possible. So I think altogether, I mean, it's just, I was just so blessed to have found them, honestly, because Asian American casting is a little bit more difficult on the East Coast than it is on the West Coast. And so for me to find these gems and be able to have them both in my movie, I mean, I was, I just feel very lucky. Awesome. Now, you talk a lot about story. What attracted you as a director to this story? Well, I'm a native, native of Philadelphia, and my parents had a Chinese restaurant. So in many ways, I grew up like the stereotype, very sheltered, but so did a lot of my friends. And so there were so many rich stories within that kind of immigrant lifestyle with like a mom and pop shop and 24 seven living in like, you know, um, to make money, to make, you know, put food on the table, put a roof over your head. And I was all, I still am very fascinated with that, that, that story. And it could be like someone from a falafel shop to a pizza shop. And this just happened to be a Chinese restaurant. And I definitely want to represent my voice. And my voice is Chinese American. So um, I was very attracted to the story by just, the rawness of it, the humanity of it, because it's it's not just an Asian American story, as it is a human story. So, yeah, no, and, and as far as the production, getting everything together, you already talked about how you got the casting together. I mean, you know, getting locations, getting everything. You know, how, what was your kind of process getting everything? Did you have a, just a producer that was also working with you to get, you know, kind of uh, lock things down for you? Um, I think this is one of the stories that stuck with me as I was growing up. So I always kept in mind locations and aspects of Philadelphia that I loved, that I felt like represented what the type of characters and the type of story that I wanted to tell. Um, I did a lot of the scouting myself. Um, my parents helped with the language difficulty with, um, <laughs> with Cantonese. Um, but later on in the process, I brought down a producer and together we honed down the location of the school, the location of um, the restaurant, and really tried to bring to life exactly what I had in mind. Did you go to film school by any chance? I went to two film schools. Undergrad, I went to Penn State University, and I did my master's at Columbia, and I did I, for my concentration in directing. So, just graduated, so. And how about you guys? Did, did you guys ever attend any acting schools or anything like that to, to kind of get better at what you do, or do you kind of believe in those? Or is it? I know you kind of do theater, so it's a little bit different, but, you know, I think with anything, there's a bit of training and everything, you know, a little learning all the time, and especially in directing as well. But did you guys go to any, do any formal training in acting? I, mean, I went to NYU and I studied uh, educational theater, as per se, of like majoring in acting. And after that, I, uh, after graduating from uh, NYU, um, I took acting classes uh, throughout New York City and stuff like that. But I think the bulk of it was really like going and doing it and learning in that process and uh, can you hold I think you want me to hold this are you sure <laughs> so the process is like you know how do we get better at anything is by doing it right and really thinking about it just like really like you know jumping into characters and stuff like that so over the course of many years I think that's how I've gotten so comfortable um, you know with acting especially on a film it's a whole different ball game whereas theater is so heightened and film is so much more subtle and you know but there are both beautiful like ways of acting so oh right. hello it's heavy. this I is know, right? <laughs> <laughs> i know i'm sure <laughs> strong um let's see i um well when i was a, when i was a kid i was always involved in in the my school plays and um, it was actually on the fly that I decided that I was going to audition for LaGuardia High School Performing Arts. So uh, when I auditioned, I like at that time I didn't even know what a monologue was. I didn't. I actually um, improvised my monologue and my audition. So and and so anyway. So I, I actually attended there and I um, studied drama and graduated from there. And um, but after like three to four years of intense 
training there, especially for, you know, so, so in this developmental adolescence of stage, I was just like, you know what, and I decided that I was going, when I went to college, and I also went to NYU, but I had uh, decided to um, major in, well, actually, I went to the Gallatin School. So what I decided to concentrate on was more about psychology, um, the more, really much more about the human condition and, like, philosophy. And that's really, those are the subjects uh, that helped um, inform me more about just life and humanity and and that's what I how I choose to, to work when it comes to developing characters and things like that and of course like taking of absolutely courses around New York City and working with various teachers and also you know just overall great experience working with really great people um, has like the people that I'm that's present right now <laughs> so yeah now having gone to film school is there did it do you feel that it prepared you to actually accurately do your own work I mean there's always things that you're gonna learn on the fly of course but did it did it give you kind of the fun I know you don't want to ever slam film school but do you, did it, you feel that it gave you the fundamentals to, to, to actually when you got behind the the camera you were able to you know kind of really do it was there anything you wish you did learn oh that's so that's such a good question um, you could tell I do this yes <laughs> You know, film school is a double-edged sword. It costs a lot of money, and it's actually not necessary. But I think um, it's a personal choice. Um, I made the personal choice twice because I felt like I didn't get the tools that I needed to tell the stories that I wanted to tell at Penn State. So worked in New York for a little bit, and then I went to grad school. Would I do it? I would... The advice I would give somebody else who's thinking about film school is it's a very personal choice. For me, I grew up with, I grew up actually very poor. And so for me, it gave me a financial, financial breather where I could actually make these films. Because I felt like before that, there was no way I could make these films. If you have no money, you just couldn't. Because like now, the digital age is very different than it was like 10 years ago. Yeah. So the ability to do that, you needed some sort of capital. And my capital was film school. It gave me the breather. It gave me health insurance. It gave me the time to actually create and to be honest, film school for me, I think graduate film school, like I said, is a double-edged sword. I mean, I learned tools there about storytelling and narrative that I honestly could not have gotten anywhere else because Columbia has a very specific way of uh, teaching film, mm -hmm. filmmaking, and a very strong classic narrative, you know? But I also believe that it actually limits you as well because there are so many other ways to tell a story. And I think that's what I'm discovering post-graduate school that those are good tools and those are good foundations, but life is the bigger one. I like that. That's a good answer. Yeah, so life is the bigger one. And See, good, good question. Better answer. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel like, you know, this is just the beginning of my filmmaking journey. I mean, we made a great film and I, I am very thankful to it, but I honestly believe that this is just the beginning. Excellent. Now, that being said, you know, it got you here to the First Glance Film Festival, and, you know, what, what made you want to submit to this festival? You know, obviously you shot in Philadelphia, so I'm sure that was a big, a big reason, but why did you single this one out as part of, you know, your festival tour? Well, to be honest, um, I got into, well, I think, I, I don't know, they had the online? Yes. I got into the Hollywood one, and, I w and it was going to be my premiere, so I was like, I didn't want to premiere online, I wanted to premiere in person. And so when this opportunity to, to reapply to the f um, First Glance one in Philadelphia, in my hometown, where it was shot, it just meant so much, because people who meant a lot to me, who understood where the story was coming from, would be able to see it on big screen. And you know this, it's nothing compared to like seeing something on big screen as opposed to like your 13 inch at home, so. Yes, no, absolutely, and uh, do you have any other plans for this film after this festival? Um, no, I, like I said, you know, I, I just uh, running around the um, film festival circuit, it won the DGA um, award, so I'm pretty happy. Yay. With it. Yeah, I know, yay! Um, I'm pretty happy with where it's gone and where it's been and who's seen it. Um, I think now it's just a matter of what's next. And for me, it's um, getting those life experiences and, you know, working on my features. I got four treatments lined up and I'm ready to go. Irons in the fire, I love it. Well, thank you guys for coming here tonight. Thank you. And, uh, and hope you enjoy the rest of the festival.